My name is Gavin Jennings. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon and I specialise in problems around the shoulder girdle. So basically from here down to the elbow. Overall, um, any shoulder surgeon um, will see uh, about 70% of their patients rather will be um, presenting with problems with what we call the rotator cuff, which are the deep tendons around the shoulder. Um, which unfortunately tend to cause quite a few problems. So they generally have pain um, at the upper arm and they're okay at rest with their arm down here, they're fine. They can carry things by their sides, but the minute they start to come up into what we call the mid arc, so this middle part of movement between about here and here, that's when they get pain in the shoulder. And that's essentially, in, in simple terms, that's essentially because that's the point at which the tendons start to rub and get irritated through this area here. So we really generally start with non-operative means to, and try and avoid an operation if we possibly can. This should be the case for most things really. Um, so physiotherapy is important. We'll often use uh, steroid injections as well, um, cautiously, um, to try and reduce the inflammation in the tendons. Um, it's slightly different depending on what the cause of the problem is. So if somebody's had a, a good shoulder, um, they, they fall or have an injury and then tear that rotator cuff tendon, then we're more likely to think about operating to fix it, to put it back where it came from, um, as opposed to someone who's sort of progressively got pain, you know, maybe from a bit of overuse. Sometimes people come in, they've cut their hedge, um, you know, after it's uh, got out of hand, spend a lot of time working up in this mid-arc zone where the problems occur, and that can generate pain. Um, and then it just fails to settle. Um, and the way we think of it is that once the tendons get inflamed, they're a bit swollen. If they're a bit swollen, they tend to continue to irritate um, because of the space through which they can move is a bit limited. Um, but in reality, it's probably a bit more complicated than that. Um, when the tendons aren't working, um, everything starts to go a bit awry. The shoulder blade control um, is affected um, and you propagate the problem and it fails to settle. One of the reasons I ended up going into orthopaedics is because generally we do have quite a big impact. Um, you see a, a problem, um, you know, there's a, often a fairly clear route to overcoming that problem and the effect on people's, you know, just daily life, their ability to sleep, for example, their ability to work, their ability to enjoy themselves and carry out their hobbies can be really significant. So it's very rewarding in that respect. I like the feel of the place. Um, the staff are uh, friendly. Um, it's a nice environment to work in. Um, it's a sort of, you know, particularly on a day like today, you, you won't see it from here, but it's beautifully sunny. Um, it's the sort of leafy surrounds. Um, it's, a, it's just a very um, calming, nice environment. Shoulder surgery over the last 10 or 15 years has is, is just sort of been stratospheric in terms of development. Um, there's a few things I've been involved in personally um, in recent years, for example. Um, so uh, I did the first um, arthroscopies in, in the clinic environment with the patient awake, um, literally in the clinic room. Um, the first ones in Europe. Um, I did the first uh, computer navigated shoulder replacements outside of the trial centre, which is in Liverpool. So outside of that, I did the first one. So I try to, you know, keep my eye on um, developments um, and you know not all of them make sense to me so I'm not going to be I'll, I'll leave some things for other people to sort of try first and you know if it does work out to my surprise then you know not, might be adopting it later but um, I try to keep uh, you know be avant-garde in terms of developing technologies.